Hey everybody, I'm Russo. I do a little work here and there. And you are watching Rack and Tear Weekly, the more or less monthly show where I talk about the things I've been working on the past few weeks and the things I may be working on in the weeks to come. This month, I've been all over the place, so I have a number of talking points, and that number is six. So this, perhaps ironically, is number one, a D4, in follow-up to last month's discussion of a sci-fi dice set, and that dice set did not have a D4, as it was ultimately deemed unnecessary. But after the fact, I thought, hey, why don't I make one of those anyway? But also, why not make it an opportunity to try some new things? So this is not quite finished, but it's done enough to show, and I will bring out all of these other dice to illustrate the difference and what makes this, I guess, a little special. And I'm not going to make you guess if you haven't already. It is that curve. So the construction is the same as all of these other dice, or in fact, it's very similar to the cube, where there are four layers of cardstock, and the edges form 45 degree bevels so that you get these 90 degree edges. Now that makes this D4 shape a little more difficult because of this curve. So long story short, you have to do some extra calculating to make sure these ends end up being 45 degree angles. The sides though are pretty easy. But yeah, I don't want to linger too long, and that basically is that. So I will just say, mission accomplished. It's a shape that you've probably seen before in dice. It's reminiscent of a baseball or a tennis ball, but, you know, 90 degree angles. And in a way, I feel it's the most sci-fi of all the dice. So, moving on. This is an elven window, at this point mostly, of Terranscape's design. Now, I feel it's important to note that these windows went through a number of revisions and that this particular window is from one of the earlier videos on the topic. So in terms of dimensions, it is just under two and a half inches tall and just under one and three quarter inches wide. And it's pretty much exactly one eighth of an inch thick. So in my mind, the distance to those even and a half and three quarters measurements would likely be made up by window frame, but the thickness, well, that has to be kept down. You also may have noticed that there is glass in these top three areas, and I would have put glass in the bottom two areas, but those just seemed like really large expanses to me, and maybe elves have magic glass or something, but personally I feel that's a perfect excuse for some curved louver doors or something like that. Storm shutters, if you will. Of course, I also feel it's important to note the original intent of the designs, which was to be laser cut from MDF or some similar material, and I seem to remember the thickness of that material being something like 0.03 inches. And I only mention that because the material thickness here is roughly 0 0.0108 inches. And I mean, what's all that add up to? And I guess that might be that it's too much work for how good it looks. I mean, it's fine. I could use paint. You have to paint it before you put the window in. Uh, you also have to harden it before you put the window in. I make all of these things out of cardstock, and then I rub super glue over the whole thing, which tends to work pretty well. But how many windows do you have to make? So I guess what? Cast them? Forget about the glass. Maybe nobody will see the inside of the building? Cast them. Make them flat on the back and glue some mylar on there. It would be fine, and if you're not opening the buildings up, why do any detail, even the sparse detail on the inside? Anyway, it's a cool design, and it was fun tinkering around with it and bringing it into the real world. Even if, eh, maybe I could have done a better job. At least, I don't have to do the whole building. That was number two, moving on to three. This is a, well, what do you call that, tank tread? A tank track? The terms may be interchangeable. And again, this one's made out of cardstock, and, uh, you know, various glues, and toothpicks, which I feel may be the Achilles heel here. So, what do we got? One, all the wheels you would expect. Road wheel, drive wheel, idle wheels, whatever. Two, we got the track. 
forget how many of them are in there. I could count, but I'm not going to because it hurts. Though I will say, if you are willing to count, that each track is comprised of 18 tiny little pieces. And then there's the little bits of toothpick between them. And then all the wheels are a bunch of pieces too. I don't even know. The point is, it works in a manner of speaking. And that is to say, it rolls around. I mean, if you hold it just right and push it. I have also hooked a little motor up to it, and I had it spin at high speeds for a number of minutes. That number I don't know. So it is functional, sure, but I need to figure something out for like bearings or bushings or, you know, right now there's just too much friction for exactly what I have in mind. Anyway, number three, that's about all I have to say about that. It needs work. So what, number four. And this is for a wooden barn in N scale. That is N scale as an N gauge, as in 1 to 160 or thereabout model trains. This is 1 to 160, or at least I think it is. It's been years since I spoke any French, but as I seem to recall, the numbers tend to look the same. Anyway, I will bring up a picture from the original file, and this has a link sort of printed on it, that you can type in and find your way to this here French web zone. Of course, you can see I made mine to look in a slightly better state of repair, and I will say that that is only partially because this file is not a template. It is more an explanation of what to do. So, it looks like there's a bunch of little planks and a bunch of little shingles, and that's because there are a bunch of little planks and a bunch of little shingles. I didn't paint the inside, but if you looked inside, it does look like the inside would look. Or at least I assume I've never been inside of a French wooden barn, and I must admit, it does seem to me that certain important structural elements were absent from the construction, but it works. It works, and it looks good. So. In addition to filling in all the little boards, I did make a couple of additions. So one, I put a bottom on it, and that is to represent a concrete slab. Then I put sills under the windows, and I put bits of plastic in the window and covered them with super glue so they would frost. And that means since the doors open and close, I could put a little LED from a tea light and a battery in there, cover them with a little piece of baker's parchment, and get a nice glow from the inside. Of course, this isn't very easy to see on camera, so I've taken this still photograph. So it's very nice, it looks very appropriate. But it is important to remember how thick your material is here in scale. I want to say that it's something like, you know, it was 0 0.0108 inches, so one and three quarters of an inch or thereabout. What that is in millimeters, I don't know right offhand. Granted, I don't really even know what it is in inches. But I do know it's like, uh, board thickness. But you wouldn't want to use anything thicker than that, unless, of course, the doors don't open and you can't see how thick it is. Then it's fine. But yeah, that's just 1 to 160, and it's cool, but, you know, I don't need a third scale. Most of the time I do 1 to 48, or I do something like 1 to 300. So, I don't know, maybe I'll do more in scale. This is not my design. Maybe I'll design something. But, I don't know. We'll see. We will see that this is the last of the paper projects. Now I have a couple of other things to talk about. So first, what I guess you could say is the big announcement. Atomico is getting ready to launch another miniatures campaign. So what you are seeing now is the most recent photograph that he's posted. And yeah, I know this is a little pixelated, but we'll get the close-ups in just a moment. As you can see, these miniatures are a little outside of Atomico's usual fare. And that is, they are what you might consider contemporary in terms of genre. Or, to put it another way, they are inspired by the classic Hong Kong cinema of the 70s to 90s. So let's go ahead and look through the miniatures as they were posted. First, a hitman in a suit with a single pistol. Second, an enforcer with a shotgun with a shirt and tie, but no jacket. Next, another guy with a shotgun, similar outfit, this time with the shotgun over his shoulder, and smoking a cigar. Next, another hitman, similar attire to the first. Same armament, if you will. Then, the mob boss, very cool, with a cane and a cigar and an overcoat draped over his shoulders. Next up, guy wearing a jacket with two pistols. Atomico says, wielding two guns, he is ready to even the score. Then, we got guys without guns, this first one in a tank top and ready to grapple. 
and the second one in a tight t-shirt cracking his knuckles. And after that, there's a couple of thugs with bats, sleeves rolled up, wearing vests but no jackets. This first one is swinging his bat, and the second one's holding it, sort of tapping it in his hand with ill intent. And uh, then we've got a couple other pictures floating around here. This one is a scale comparison with one of Atomico's previous miniatures to the left, and a Reaper miniature to the right. And then we got a few of the guys jumping out of what looks like a Camaro, ready for action, whatever that entails. We got a picture of everybody cast and primed and absolutely dwarfed by what was Atomico's lunch that day. And that brings us back to this, the most recent picture. So, like I said, this campaign is coming up, and once it is in full swing, don't worry, I'll have some things to say about it. But until then, you can follow Atomico on his Instagram, that'd probably be the best thing, and I will link to that in the description. And also, that leads us to our final point, which is my Instagram and the Instagram cataloging project that I mentioned last month. Currently that is underway, and that's to say that I made seven posts, and then I started doing internal cataloging. So internally we're up to 50, I just do a few every once in a while, and eventually they'll just all get posted. So you could find my Instagram as well, but I would urge you not to do that at this point, because at some point in the future there will be a massive dump, and if you are following, well, I don't know what else is going to show up in your feed, so... That might take a while, but like I said, I'm already a quarter way through um, preparing all the things, so I don't know how I'll do that. I don't know how kosher that is as far as Instagram is concerned, so we're feeling it out with the seven posts, and if you wanted to see what the format or whatever, it's over there. And uh, here on the screen, it's been on the screen. Sometimes I forget about that. Anyway, that's going to have to be it for now. Rest assured, we got some exciting things on the way, but, you know, they take time. And if it's anything like these projects, uh, not counting those last two things, but the paper projects, then I would say they all just need a little more work. Or, you know, whatever it is, it's going to have to be better than that if I'm going to plan on wasting people's time with it. More complete, at least. So, until next time, you've been watching Rack and Tear Weekly on the Rousseau Works, and I am Rousseau. Out.